Millennials, we stare bleakly into the dismal void of TikTok only to be met with fierce mockery from our Gen Z counterparts. And as we smirk ambivalently through gritted teeth, coated in the crumbs of our last avocado on toast, we're hit with a stark and depressing realization. We have lost our identity. For years, we were the youthful, dynamic, unapologetically progressive generation, lambasting the callous ignorance of our forebears. Our hubristic cries of cultural revolt echoed through the young halls of a nascent social media. But as is always the case with a story of history that is defiantly cyclical, we have been humbled, and viciously at that. What were once grand plans for a compassionate world of utopian equality have descended into a dark digital tribalism. Social platforms intended to democratize human expression, offer new adventurous romantic opportunities, have been brutally corporatized or censured heavily under a banner of neo-puritanism. And the irony behind Gen Z's portrayal of us as pathetic Harry Potter obsessed cretins is that we sowed the seeds for the culture they find themselves in. Early millennials and late Gen Xers built social media. Later millennials spread budding forms of today's cultural right and cultural left on sites like Tumblr, Twitter, 4chan, or Reddit. Gen Z exist the way they do because of the cultural infrastructure we built. They've stolen our identity, co-opted the cancel culture we championed, only to cancel us. So what does the future hold for a generation currently at rock bottom? No longer able to wield the mantle as the fervently progressive youths they once were, yet still unable to wield any great deal of political influence as Gen X finally take on the levers of power behind a vanguard of retiring boomers. As we millennials move toward our middle age, many of us chasing the ever elusive Western dream, I believe we have an opportunity to forge a new identity and significantly impact the world of tomorrow just like Harry Potter did. Chapter one, the millennial prophecy. Historian William Strauss has a book called Generations where he maps out the cyclical nature of successive American cohorts with shocking accuracy. They follow a four phase cycle. Dominant civic generations come of age during a secular crisis. The last being the greatest generation born between 1910 and 1924. They faced the depression in their youth and fought in World War II. They then went on to rebuild the West, form new global institutions and raise the now aging boomers. Following a civic generation comes a recessive adaptive generation, the last being the silent generation. Their name says it all, perpetually in the shadow of their greatest elders, tempering the excesses of their parents' rigid sense of civic duty and their junior's sense of spiritual transcendence and focus on the self. A generation sandwiched between two more prominent cohorts. Funnily enough, the only American president to have been of the silent generation and almost certainly the only one that will be, is Joe Biden. And he truly does emulate those characteristics. Then we have an idealist generation, many of whom were our parents, the infamous baby boomers, now finally moving into retirement. Idealist generations come of age during a spiritual, inward-looking crisis. The boomers' legacy will forever be the cultural revolution of the 60s and 70s, with its subsequent cementing of ideals across mainstream Western culture and its institutions. Finally, we have a recessive, reactive generation. They follow an idealist generation and come of age through an inner-driven era with more self-focused parents and a lack of childhood investment. A reactive generation is often rebellious, risk-taking and individualistic, later becoming reclusive elders. This is Gen X, primarily the parents of Gen Z. Millennials are the next civic generation. Strauss posits that America, and by proxy the Western world, experiences a secular crisis roughly every 80 years, and with the US barely clinging to its status as the global hegemon, the next secular crisis is due this decade. Already the last couple of years have seen disruptive political, social, economic and medical events that could be described as mini secular crises, fiercely shattering our youthfully credulous view of reality and history as linear. These events, including but not limited to, COVID, rising populism and unrest, the culture war, digitization, loss of faith in post-war institutions, energy and economic insecurity, and now even the threat of nuclear war. We're still reeling from COVID, a precarious Chinese economy and Russia's assault on Ukraine. It truly feels like there's a dark serpent simmering beneath unsettled waters and things will get worse before they get better. The current status quo seems awfully untenable and the new millennial identity will be forged through this period of turmoil. Chapter two, the millennial culture of tomorrow. The world is moving into a transitory phase. Global economic liberalism is causing massive and likely unsustainable inequality across the developed and developing world 
making it harder for millennials to achieve basic bastions of meaning, such as home ownership and a family. The boomer and silent-led secularization and cultural revolution of the 60s gave us an insurmountable sense of freedom, but coupled with modern technology, it's now leaving us spiritually dissatisfied, aimless, and insecure. During this period, millennials will take a turn right. This invariably happens as a generation ages anyhow. I think the Gen X working class will be the driving force for a short period of right-wing nationalism where millennials will instead move towards a new form of small c conservatism. Millennials will lose faith in stymied governments and to achieve the things their parents did, they'll simply not be able to consume to the same degree. They'll become financially and culturally abstemious as they age in an increasingly insecure world. However, millennials will also experience a gargantuan transfer of wealth from baby boomers. But rather than keeping said wealth in lucrative and safe investments, Millennials will build new small to medium-sized e-commerce businesses, move away from large cities, and invest in their families and their communities. I'll talk more about how I believe millennials will change the workforce later in the video. A substantial impact millennials will have on the culture of tomorrow is that they'll likely turn away from the boomer idealism of sexual and cultural freedom to form new moral ideas about relationships. These will be far more egalitarian and inclusive than they were pre-1960, but they won't be so individualistic and freedom focused. Feminist writer and I assume millennial, I couldn't find her age, Louise Perry recently wrote a book titled The Case Against the Sexual Revolution. Still a dissident opinion within modern feminism, but part of a growing cadre of millennial intellectuals challenging the orthodoxy of cultural liberalism in a way that I suspect would not have been so well received a mere 10 years ago. In fact, despite a world of loosened sexual morality, Millennials have less casual sex than our boomer and Gen X elders. I'm sure online pornography has contributed to this, but also human psychology perceives the inappropriate or dangerous as sexually alluring, and with fewer people decrying premarital, casual, or otherwise alternative sex, it contrastingly becomes less appealing. Millennials won't shame these acts and control the youth in the way their ancestors did, but rather develop new moral guidelines about how they can live their sexual and romantic lives meaningfully in a world of free pornography and sex robots. Online dating, which promised a smorgasbord of perfectly matched suitors, has left millennials feeling replaceable, hollow, and jaded. Millennials will also develop ethical guidelines to deal with these unforeseen consequences in a largely liberated, technologically advanced, capitalist society. Millennials will leave a prominent legacy with new ideas surrounding sex, relationships, and morality. Chapter three, the millennial national identity. On the Neil and Jordan podcast, check us out if you haven't already, I suggest that multiculturalism as an ideal will eventually die down throughout the West. The next 10 to 20 years will see fervent nationalist and maybe even ethno-nationalist sentiment, but this will be a relatively short period of reactionary rhetoric before evolving into something more substantial and future-focused. I believe multiculturalism as a policy was a way to expiate the Western world of their colonial guilt. It's an important phase in the cultural evolution of the West towards a multi-ethnic society. But a multi-ethnic society and a multicultural society, often used interchangeably, are very different. Western countries already are multi-ethnic. And moving towards the midpoint of this century, white people are projected to no longer be a majority, in some countries not even a plurality. It will be a hard sell to call Australia in the 2050s a white supremacist country when governments and society's upper echelons actually are multi-ethnic and not exclusively white. I don't think reactionary nationalism, which does seem to be on the rise, will survive long term. But as Gen X age into retirement, millennials will then forge a new national identity in a post-industrial cosmopolitan society. Millennial thinkers will take the best aspects of traditional Western ideals like individualism and the entrepreneurial spirit and include them in a new code of spiritual, philosophical and cultural values to engender new national identities across the developed world. Yes, we should reconcile with the ills of the past, but eventually for a nation to flourish, it needs an inclusive and somewhat homogenous sense of national identity and pride. Millennials will be the ones to create this. Chapter four, millennial parenting. Before millennials can implement any radical new ideals, they'll have to move through the next phase of human history in their lifespan. Early millennials are approaching middle age and younger millennials are now firmly entrenched in their 20s. Our youth is either over or coming to its end. Many millennials are young parents, about to become parents, or grappling with the choice itself. So what will millennials be like as parents? Millennials will move through this phase of life humbly and diligently trying to correct the mistakes of yesteryear. 
As parents, they will attempt to preclude the childhood trauma they love to analyze for their own kids. Millennials will do a better job of avoiding the mistakes Gen X parents made with Gen Z in stridently controlling what we now know is harmful social media exposure. Millennials aren't known for being a picture of positive mental health, but the rates of anxiety, depression, and a general lack of meaning among Gen Z are frighteningly high. Their dopamine receptors have been brutally ravaged by years of mindless, inane scrolling. So, as millennials move into parenthood, it will become their cultural impetus to reverse this horrifying trend. They may look to ailing government institutions for aid, but this will be best performed themselves. Millennial thinkers will develop new ideas to deal with the technology that currently consumes us and how it relates to children. What you have with a smartphone is a chalice of both infinite human knowledge and potential, as well as a dark cavern of hedonism and addiction. It truly is God and Satan in the palm of your hand. And millennials will leave a legacy of developing the cultural framework to manage this and any future disruptive technology. If millennials can pass through the next 20 or so years of a transitory global order amidst cultural anarchy, raising a well put together generation of productive, industrious, emotionally intelligent, mature adolescents capable of dealing with an ever changing technological landscape, they'll move into their senior years with a sense of confidence a mandate to codify their cultural wisdom into new civic and cultural institutions as Gen X moves on. And this will be a large part of their political legacy through the middle of this century. That being said, future millennial politics probably needs a video in itself. Millennials will be equal parts adaptive and cautious when traversing the minefield of future technologies like robotics and virtual reality. But knowing full well the stakes at play, namely the harsher effects of climate change and overpopulation, Millennials will do everything to raise the next generation with a firm sense of mental intelligence and fortitude. Millennials will also see one of the largest percentages of childless singles moving into old age. They'll have to come to terms with worsening fertility rates and find a cultural balance between the freedom not to have children and the civic responsibility to plan for the future. Single millennials will be a significant political force and likely be disproportionately represented in government and top corporate positions. Various policies to increase child rearing will be attempted and migration will remain high. Single parenthood could become the norm and groups of single parents may band together to mimic the effect of an extended family. Ideal parenting, nutrition, family structure, the role of singledom and relationship psychology will be of significant importance to millennials in the near future. New literature, ideas and philosophies on this topics will flourish and in many ways already are. Chapter five, the millennial workforce. By 2025, it's projected that millennials will make up over 70% of the workforce. Their ideals will significantly impact the ethics and management of small business, government organizations, and corporations. Already post COVID, we're experiencing a great resignation. Here in Australia, it's estimated that 2 million people are ready to quit their jobs in the next six to 12 months. This will likely then continue because the remaining workers will be even more fatigued at having to pick up the slack. As remote work increases, corporations may outsource countless service jobs to developing nations with English speaking populations who are less likely to insist on a work-life balance. This could hit the domestic economies of post-industrial Western nations. However, many of the people leaving their corporate jobs are starting e-commerce businesses, becoming influencers or taking entrepreneurial risks even if they do become less financially productive in the short term, as their general quality of life and capacity for creativity increase, this would be beneficial to a post-industrial economy with new robotics technology. Millennials will likely have to endure stunted economic growth, potentially even a depression, in the short term. But across the medium and long term, they'll create a more dynamic, less concentrated, creative economy. The one thing that could unite the millennial left and right is a sort of anti-corporate populism, Corporations are vital. They're part of the wealth and efficiency generating engine of the West. Liberal democracies should foster conditions for corporations to thrive, but they can't be left completely unregulated, as they have been. Millennials on the left and now the right are increasingly critical of things like lobbying and the extent of cultural influence many corporations wield. Millennials, despite being an initial force of this trend, are now critical of corporations co-opting social movements and propagating vapid and false social justice advertising. A reason people are quite quitting is that in spite of the abstruse corporate jargon, many workers, 
mostly millennial, understand they're a largely replaceable cog in a machine. They're happy to do the job and earn great money, but the vast majority of millennials will not give up their lives for the sake of a corporation. Another theory I have for the bombardment of hollow social justice advertising is that it's a way for corporate workers to feel part of something larger. If you're unconsciously aware your life may be meaningless, I'm assuming you'd be attracted to narratives like girl boss feminism or diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives to give your life a sense of purpose and even heroism. Millennials already are questioning this and turning their back on the grind lifestyle. Aging institutions will die out or be forced to adapt. In my industry, media and the arts, many powerful institutions of the past are in an overtly downward spiral be in Hollywood, television news, print media, even in my specific industry here in Australia, many aspiring comedians are turning their back on traditional avenues to reverence and instead opting for new pathways. As someone who paved my own way on social media, it's harder but so much more rewarding. Building something like Comedy Untamed over the past couple of years, which aims to be a major artistic institution of the future and currently has regular shows in Sydney, Melbourne and elsewhere, come along, it feels so much more adventurous and many other millennials across industries are following suit. Gen X will likely oversee the last stand of many institutions, especially those in the media, and millennials will build the institutions of tomorrow. The next two decades will be transitory, chaotic, and likely quite harsh. Millennials will be forced to develop strict behavioral codes around parenting and explore new ideals as what will soon become traditional Western culture no longer serves us in an ever-changing world. Huge transfers of wealth will culminate in the millennial generation moving into leadership positions throughout the 2040s, and they will then build the institutions and culture of tomorrow. It's very difficult to make predictions about culture in the current world, so I no doubt expect to get much of these projections wrong. But at the very least, I hope this video can offer a sense of purpose to a generation reeling from its cultural defenestration and staring up at a calamitous future. Maybe one day in 2050, we'll look back at this moment in our generational history and say that's when we began to build our new identity. Thanks for watching.